I am Elijah. Greetings, Elijah, and welcome. Namaste, much love to you. There are so many things to speak to you about at this time in, the, in your ascension. We could speak about how to alleviate pain or stress or how to bring up many of your qualities to a greater uh, usefulness. We can talk about how the earth is changed and how you feel that it has changed in many different ways and how you observe one another differently now than you are that you are understanding what God's will is for the future. Now more than ever, it is time for you to awaken and to understand that there is all kinds of information around you that is to be used for positive reasoning. Now, I know that many of you are in pain, and I would like to say this about that. There is a great deal of pain being put on humans that are moving or trying to move forward because this way it stops the positivity from a, po a pure flow. If you are feeling pain, anxiety, stress, or any of these things, you know that you are being affected from moving and doing the things as purely and as effectively as you can do. Now, I'm going not going to say that they're going to take the pain away because they were going to continue to try to keep things at a slower pace than what we would like to see move forward. But I can tell you this, you will be given the strength be given the drive, and be given the understanding and love that you need to move forward. Pain can be worked through. You yourself and your belief systems can overcome it. You can overcome your own pains by believing that the pain is only there to slow you down. So let this pain not slow you down and believe that it is part of the answer in some way. Let the pain drive you forward so that you may understand that there is some sacrifice in what you are doing. But the outcome will be great and your reward immense. And the satisfaction of helping all of mankind is beyond measure. There are so many things that are happening to this planet at this time. I'm sure many of you look at the YouTubes and the different things that are happening. The earthquakes, the energy pulses, the different things, the, uh, uh, the possibility of volcanic eruption, the great weather changes, the very fact that uh, the, the axis is moving and things of this nature. There's so many other things, and you may look at them as a negative thing, but there, do not do that. Do not concern yourself with these things that may seem negative because they will not affect your journey at this time. What affects your journey is your belief system and your positivity and what you want to have happen in your life, what you accept as the truth, what you want to give to others, your example to the world. These are the things that count. Oh yes, there might be pain as I mentioned, but as you become positive in your pain by letting it letting them know that the pain is not the worst part of the journey but the worst part of the journey is not helping enough people 
not getting to where you want to go in your journey until you are in the right frame of mind. Not getting to where you need to be until you are in the place where God can use you the, for the best good. And sometimes you don't even know when that is until it happens. But you will experience the joy that is there for you. There are so many thoughts that I have, and they are coming out in random order at this time because this is the energies of this world are in a random order. The solar flares, the solar winds, the energies from the center of the galaxy, the all the things that are there that uh, could cause pain or could cause confusion or could cause disruption are, are there in their fullest. But there are those of you that are pushing through, and I thank you for that. Be attached to God through your soul, through that great attachment, and bring yourself through. Because these times are rough. And they, I do not promise that they will get easier quickly, but they will be easier when you believe you can get through them easier. Believe that God is there to help you. Believe that you have someone to look to for answers. Believe that you can make it. A lot of you wallow in the very fact that you are feeling these things and feel low and fuzzy brained and all kinds of things. But yet, woe is you. But there are those around you that have greater problems, greater needs, greater tragedies that are affecting them. And so look past yourself past what you need right now, past what you feel. That's not easy, but it is necessary to find your way in this coming world. I love you all. And many of you have great missions, but you need to look out from the body because the body will hamper you, will pull you away from your vision, will pull you away from your journey and distract you. And this is a time where distractions can be fatal for others. Do, are there any questions? Yes, we have several questions. Um, first, from the people in the watching on the live stream, um, we have a question from a firstborn, and he just wants to know: uh, Is there any beings around him that you can sense that he can start to become aware? Yes, there are beings around you, more than one, and you you realize that already. You feel their energy, especially when you lay down at night. Um. The Syrians are with you, and they're very much with the earth at, at this time, with uh, many. They're comforting those that are having great deals of problems, but they're trying to push people forward. They are helping humanity more than any other species at this time for spiritual edification. There are other species that are working, of course. But though they're helping the most with the spiritual aspects. And he is with a Syrian right now. Okay, thank you for that. Um, also, and there's another question uh, from uh, Peter Wanders uh, Clydeson. That's a very long name. I'm, I hope I said it correctly. And uh, this person wants to know, are there any machine life forms? Because... Um, Yes. They said that uh, they, they, they know there's crystal life forms, and um, so machines aren't really that impossible. 
their perspective should be very interesting. He says he works with um, uh, programming and has come to realize the beliefs of the, he's come to these beliefs from programs. Of course, there are more than one artificial intel intelligence out there. Uh, the closest one to you is about 200 years away, but they are growing and expanding and they will become sentient beings eventually. They have what it, they are learning as they become um, intertwined with different species, their neutrality is being changed even though they find themselves to be logical and find themselves to be of just an intellectual nature, they're finding that the emotions of some uh, beings are seeming to bring logic to them as well. And so they continue to find more about themselves as artificial intelligence, they do have some programmed in emotions in them, but they're there only for protection and security. But now they will try to use emotions and those kinds of things for actual decision making and to understand sentient beings. Very interesting. Okay, and then the last question from the YouTube uh, live stream is from Connie D. And uh, this person was saying, were insects monitoring my son, insect beings, excuse me, monitoring my son from his bedroom window screen last summer? Um, I would have to check into that. I cannot, uh, I would have to read the thoughts and see what your son saw. Did he actually see these insectoid beings? I'm asking, and I hope that this person can answer quickly, and that there's a delay. So maybe yes, we'll I come understand back to that. that. So I believe that I believe that if your son could see them, yes, they were there for some reason. But I would have to look into it to see what that reason was. Okay, I will just monitor the chat, and if the, if the, something more comes up, I will let you know. Um, we'll just move back into the back into the room here, and if there's anyone in your side of the room that has a question, we'll start with them, and then we'll we'll take the people in the panel. Yes. Anyone on I your in your room? I do. There is a question. Hi, Elijah Barbara. Hello. Hi there. I have a question. Um, I already know there are beings around me. Can you tell me who they are? The, you know some of them. Yeah. Um, you know the reptilian that's yeah. around you. Yeah. And you know that there are others. One of them is a Syrian because Syrians are there to protect you in your health uh, okay. uh, situation. And your health situation is getting better. Yeah, good. And also your healing is much faster now. You're feeling the urge and the drive to do more things and to move out into the world and do your mission. And they have told you to become more active. And so therefore, you, there are those around you pushing you a little bit. The spirits that are there are from your family, from a past a family uh, connection, and they are with your dogs. Your, your dogs perceive them. And they are um, interestingly uh, trying to train your dogs to be a little better behaved so that you would have more time for other things. Is there more around me? That I yes, there's quite a few. They said that they do not want to be recognized okay. at this time. But there are those that are helping you, yes. Okay, then I have another question if I may ask. Yes. Thursday, not last Thursday, the Thursday before I was taking a picture of a monarch butterfly yes. up in the sky. I saw two ships in the picture. Yes. Do you know who they were? There are many, many ships around. What did they look like? It's just a little dot. It's just. Oh, were, uh, were they a sphere? Thing. No, it's a dark. 
dot. It's like a square almost. Almost a square. Okay, that is a different. Uh, that is a different kind of. Uh, those ships are actually from your planet that were made okay. by your your people. The square ones. Um, they are from an alien source. The information on how to make them came from an alien source. However, they are being manufactured by human beings at this time. Humans have advanced much too much in the last five years for their own good. And this is part of that advancement. Okay, okay thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much. All right, in the room, uh, first we have Leela with a question. Leela. Hi, Elijah. I have two questions. Of first, course. Yeah. First question is, uh, the, is the message from Pleiadians to me? Because I never connected with them so far. So is, is the Yemen in Pleiadian uh, who would like to give me a message? There are many Pleiadians on this planet at this time. It's, it's a very long story, but they will give you good information. The Mayan population in Pleiadians, in the Pleiades, has a great deal to do with the success of the ascension in this, in the, on this planet. They were given um, some responsibility for its success. And so you will find that Pleiadians from Maya uh, will be talking to humans. Uh, the, second, the second question is uh, from Delirian Collective Lyra. Uh, she is represent, she will, I will channel her in the future. And I would like to ask her if she has a message at this point for me. What is her name? Lyra. Her name is Lyra from the Lyran culture? Yes. She has taken on the name of her culture for to communicate with you. That is interesting. Yes. She must be the representative from that planet. Yes. One moment, please. Thank you. Yes, she does have messages for you. One of the messages is this. You, you are preparing for your next life in this life. This is important that you stay focused and you do not waver in any way from the things that you believe in this life because you are strong in energies that affect other people. And if you waver, then these energies will wane as well, and some may fail. You are the strength and backbone of some people that cannot stand on their own. Does this make sense to you? Uh, yes, that makes sense for this life and many lives before. That comes okay. from my connection with God, and that's what that is the results and re reward of serving God. That's my realization. Yeah. So she just is emphasizing that your stance in this reality is important and and you believe and I know that you believe that as well. Interesting. That is all she wants to say without being personal. Okay. Thank you very much Elijah. Um, our next uh, question is Christine. Christine. Greetings and blessings. Um, I was wondering if you could um, <clears throat> help me understand why I can't sleep at night or why I'm having so much difficulty. In the morning when I wake up, my muscles are sore like I've been working out. <laughs> so, well, yes. I'm not there are a few different things about that. First of all, <laughs> sleep has been interrupted for many on this planet. The energies are not allowing a full restful sleep. Second of all, you do a lot of astral work. And this astral work is actually physical. 
Some of it is uh, on the planet Palana. Some of it is on the planet Era. And you do building, uh, you're helping them to build some facilities there um, in the astral for hybridization projects and for other projects as well. That's why your muscles hurt in the morning because that translates back into the into the physical from the spirit um, in some ways. <coughs> so therefore, yes, you will feel a little bit like that. I'm praying and we are asking God that uh, this, this kind of uh, sleeplessness is resolved very shortly. Um, is this cough <coughs> that I have, um, is it from um, some of this work or is this just a physical ailment like the, like the arthritis? One moment, please. <coughs> it would appear that you do have some bacterial problems there. So that would be something you might want to seek some attention for. Thank you. You're welcome. Blessed be. Blessed be. Thank you. And after Christine, uh, we have Ewa. Greetings. Is it pronounced Eva or Ewa? Eva. Eva. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Greetings, greetings, Elijah, and thank you so much for um, uh, coming and talking to us. Um, I have a question. Um, as you know, a lot of us come here to planet Earth to help, but we somehow get entangled with um, challenges of living here, creating yes. money, taking care of physical bodies. This is this is really not easy and seems like we quite often get distracted from who we really are because we have to do all kinds of other things absolutely and, uh, some of us like myself allowed um, being injured like ptsd in my case which means fears which is another way of feels to me not allowing myself to be the love I feel I am. So what, what would be your advice? How, how to function better here to be able to, to do and be what I am? Yes, I realize that Earning a living on this planet is very harsh. It is money has become the most important object on the planet. Not spirit, not love, not understanding or wisdom, but the survival instinct with money is the greatest need and it has to be done to survive. Now, remember the laws of attraction will also help you and Mother Gaia helps you as well. But let me tell you this. Where you go to do your work is important because you, does this particular job drain you of your energies? Well, it doesn't, uh, I mean, it's not a bad job, but it feels like I have so much to give. And um, there is no re real outlet there. I see. The reason, remember this, when you are working at a job and giving your energies to it, you must remember that that's not really a spiritual energy that you are using. And that when you are not using your spiritual energy, you can recharge it. And the spiritual energies during your work time can also be helpful to you because you can, as you work, do prayer and thanksgiving and things of this nature to help edify the spiritual and physical body and emotional body. Even though that you are extend, expending uh, energies in your daily work life, 
you can still bring in the energies of the spirit to help you. Now, I know that is not always the answer that people are looking for. They want to be the example at work and not be forced into a corner, but that is part of the example that you will show is that you are able to exist in a happy way, in a positive way, in a way that in, and it helps other people at work, um, even if you're expending energies and trying to uh, survive. But remember this also, the law of attraction is helping many. There are those that are out there that have no money, but somehow money comes to them and be, becomes part of them because they need it. And some other people see that and they are giving of their selves to others. It's a beautiful thing. I've seen it happen many times recently that there are those that are giving of themselves to those that do not have. And so this is part of the message that is going forward. Call on God all times of the day, all, all day long. Thank, thank Him and praise Him for all the things that you have. And I know that the money situation is, can be a very difficult one for many people. But let it be a lighter load because your God is looking out for your survival. God is looking out for who you are. And He wants you to not be so worried about the third dimension that you cannot see what journey you have ahead of you. And that is one of the blockages of third dimension is the workplace. It can be a very negative and it can be a very uh, trying place. It sounds like yours is not so bad. However, you need to remember that you can bring in information even when you're working and bring and send out information, love, wisdom, and goodness, even when you're working. And this will be part of the cure for this kind of life. The third dimension must change. It cannot stay the way that it is much longer. The dependence on money is too great. The dependence on other things other than spirituality and love and kindness and wisdom is way too great in this world. And so that will come to an end. But the only way that it will come to an end is with an event that may seem negative, but will bring about a greater positivity. Is that, is that the last of your questions, Eva? Um, well, if you could also address dealing with fears. Ah, fear, the greatest destroyer on your planet. Everywhere you go, there is fear because your uh, government has manipulated you to be afraid. Your religions have manipulated you to be afraid. You, every step you take... The uh, terrorists have manipulated you to be afraid to go almost anywhere because anything could happen at any time. Now, when I see that crippling humanity, fear cripples humanity. But it also is a waste of time. Let me explain. Fear is something that should be disregarded completely. Oh, how can I go there? I, I'm, afra I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that, I'm afraid of almost everything. But if you must move boldly in your world, you must move courageously with love of God in your world, knowing that God is protecting you, knowing that God is there for you, the reason why fear cripples so badly is because there's no trust in God. There's no trust that he will bring you out of these situations. There's no trust that he is powerful. But he is, and loving as well. 
He loves each and every one of you. And I know it's very hard to sometimes believe that he's there because he doesn't speak to you. He doesn't come out and say, hey, wake up. He, but he is there in the stillness and in the silence and in the wisdom that is brought to you. Sometimes you do very wise things and you don't know why. And it is because God is guiding you. You made the right decision this time because God is guiding you. You made the wrong decision this time because you were selfish and it was self-motivated, perhaps. But when you put God in the middle of your, uh, your questions and in the middle of your decisions, surprisingly, they come out a lot better. And you know, fear is something that he is trying to let everyone know that is not necessary. It's a destroyer. It stops things from happening. It stops goodness from moving forward. Even in the churches, you will find that they have fear to manipulate the people. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Oh, you're going to hell. Their judgments are fear that people go, oh, I can't do that. I'll be judged for that. I'll be judged. But you know what you're going to be mostly judged for by God or the things that you don't do that you should have done in his name. The things that you could have pushed forward and done, but you were too afraid, too shy, too weak to do. He is your strength. He is your freedom. He is your bravery, your courageousness. You do not need to be afraid if you know that God is with you. God is not going to cower in the corner. He is not going to, to cry and weep because someone is saying, no, you can't do that. He is going to stand up and be bold with you. He's going to be courageous. He's going to be who you are at that moment for the need of of the greater good, not for the need of just you, or just your family. Many people look, I have to just protect my family. I have to just protect those that are closest to me. That is what's wrong with the world right now, is that they only care about a couple people. They don't care what happens to anybody else. They don't care what happens in the world. They don't care if someone else over there dies. Woo, it wasn't my family. Woo, thank goodness. But they should be concerned about those souls because God is also concerned about those souls because they are part of God. And perhaps if someone is struck, and struck down, they had a purpose too. And now that purpose is gone. So, I know that you must care about your family. I'm not saying not to. And I'm not saying not to make them first. But you must reach out beyond them. There are cares, the world, you must pray for the entire world and not just the people around you. You must pray for the entire universe and not just the people around you. You must pray for the timelines and not just the people around you. This is power. God gives you the power to be able to move forward without fear, without condemnation. Who cares if someone says, oh, you can't do that? You can say, God allows me to do that. I believe that God is stronger than whoever you are. I believe God is stronger than whatever you're standing for because that is fear and judgment and my God doesn't want me to do that but he wants me to act in a way that is becoming to me and to him and to Jesus and the Holy Spirit and Krishna and Yahweh and Allah and all those 
that are the same God with different names. I got on my uh, little stool there and did a little bit of preachiness. But I think it's necessary for you to know fear is an obstacle. Oh, yes, you should not have the kids touch the stove or whatever. Fear that the children will hurt themselves. You must look after those that cannot look after themselves properly. But you as an individual can move boldly in this world. You know the difference between right and wrong. You know the difference where to go and where not to go. You can move boldly without fear. Do so. Courageous people. This is a time for courageous people. This is not a time for weak people. This is not a time for great fear. Of course, there's many things to fear. You can fear the earthquakes and the volcanoes and the weather and, uh, and ISIS and and you can fear the government of Donald Trump. And you can either fear Hillary Clinton because she was someone that everybody says was dark or Queen Elizabeth or whoever you want to fear. But it is useless and deterring from what you need to be doing. I hope you understood that. Yes, thank you so much, Elijah. Thank you. You're welcome. Do not live in fear. Live in joy that God is with you and that you have a purpose and that he is using you for a great purpose to bring about a greater understanding of him in the world, a greater, a greater way of life in the world. Telepathy will bring a greater understanding to the people. But it will also bring a greater understanding of God because he is part of that great change. He's part of all evolution and part of all change. Some people may say, oh, but that was a bad change. It may appear that way at the first, but look, you've survived. And there are things to come out of pain, things that come out of stress, things that come out of your daily lives that you can use to fortify yourself and make yourself stronger in character and in life, living the way that you do. Ah. Uh, let all your little problems be the something you stand on to reach higher, not something you let pull down or cover you over. You must stand on your problems so you can reach higher. Not blame people for your problems because if you take the responsibility, if you take the blame for your own actions, then you are successful because those things become a base for reaching higher. But if you blame other people for what you have done and all your problems, then that is failure because you have not built yourself. You have not collected the character that you needed. You have not used it for your good, but you've pushed it off on someone else. Remember that. Take blame when blame is yours. And then use it to stand tall. You don't have to say, oh, no, it was not my fault. You can say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake this time. But I won't do it again. And if you have that attitude and you have that fortitude within you and make that a base and make that part of your challenge in life, you will succeed because you are building yourself. And you're saying, God, please help me. But if you're saying, no, it was him, 
He's the cause of all my problems. He's, they did that. Wasn't me, not my fault. I'm not taking any blame whatsoever. And yet you did have some blame in that or did have something to do with it or could have stopped it, whatever it was then you are partially to blame, and you must take that part of the blame and bring it in as a fortifier for your character, not to use it to blame others and get rid of any uh, bad karma that you may want not want to have, but instead it will bring about positive karma that you are truthful with yourself. Be honest with yourself. That's not easy to do sometimes. Honesty with oneself. Oh, you can be honest about them and them and them. That's easy. Oh, they're such a bitch. They're so nasty. But listen to yourself. When you're saying those things to other people, you become them. And that is not what you want to do. You want to say, ah, oh, they're going through a rough time that right now, but I'm going to pray for them. I really don't want to speak badly about them, but I know that I don't agree with everything that they do. You don't have to condemn someone not to agree with them. You don't have to point and label someone not to agree with them. You don't have to discourage people to teach them. You can bring them up from their roots. You can say, look, I don't agree with what you did. I'm not condemning you for what you did because only God can do that. But tell me what is behind that? What is the motivation that you find for doing these things? And be curious and be loving and be part of the cure and not pointing the finger because what does that do? That does not draw them into the love of God. That points them in a different direction and says, I don't want to part, be a part of anything you do because you're judging me, you're not loving me, you're condemning me, or they feel it. Bring people into you. Love them. They will support you. You will support them. This is community, which we have lost sight of in some ways. Oh, yes, when there is a major disaster, there will be those that go out and help in the community, and that's beautiful. But does it take a disaster to be a community? Why can't you be a community without the disaster? Some places are, but a lot of places have lost that, lost that thought process. I don't really want anything to do with them. My next door neighbor is, you wouldn't want to even know him or her. My... That guy over there, you don't want to know him. And why not? Because they're not like you. Nobody's like you. Entirely. What if they're saying that about you? You don't want that. Remember, acceptance. Because... You want people to come to you for your wisdom, for the wisdom that God has given you that you are going to share for your journey. Boy, I think I'm becoming a little bit preachy today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's all welcome. Thank you, Elijah. Very good. I think I'll stop right there, though, if there's any questions. 
Well, we do have some questions. I have a list of questions. So if you oh, don't there's mind questions if... here too in this room. Okay, can we have a lot of people waiting? So if you mind, uh, some questions in the chat just to follow up on yes. the person about the um, the uh, insectoid. Uh, the, the Candy said that her son had uh, two praying mantises that were um, just on the window screen looking in. Um, there were, excuse me, three praying mantises on the screen looking in. Um, that's very unusual and yes right. that was a sign that there was insectoids around absolutely but okay. they were not uh, they were the mantis people the mantis people i'm not sure what part of the world you live in they seem to have a great deal of population of uh, inborn human mantis people are very popular in europe and in england okay perfect um, I don't know where they are as well, so I, I did ask, but uh, this person's internet keeps dropping, so they pop back in when they can. Um, All right. The, the other question is from Trinity Morgan. She'd like to ask if the second coming of Jesus is really first contact, because many look now to first contact to change the earth for the better instead of the second coming. Um, she wanted to know, is Jesus meant to return as the Bible mentions, or was that an idea man-made? Is Jesus coming again? How and if so, when? Jesus then, is coming again. Yes. Okay, perfect. His spirit will be here in in the in the form of a man. Yes. And first contact is something completely different because first contact is your introduction into the galactic neighborhood, where the next coming of Jesus is a spiritual awakening. There are two different things. I understand. And she also wants to know about the book of Revelations. She wants to know how relevant is the book of Revelations? Well, that is a great question. There are parts of the book of Revelations that cannot be deciphered properly because they were so cryptic in when they were written. And so the, there are many guesses as to what certain things may, may be, be being said of I uh, opening the seals and different things of this nature. Many people would think they have a handle on all the things that revelations are saying, but what revelations is actually telling you is, uh, at least for me, the most important things that it's telling me is, do you see the part where it says around the throne of God that there's lions and eagles and things of that, and they're, beside him these are other species i see They're, we are not alone in this universe he is trying to let you know that there are others that are sitting beside god that are that are very high moral species high energy species high vibrational species and he's also telling you that if you keep up your negativity, if you keep up all the things that, of negativity, which we, you, you as a planet, have continued to do, these are the, the outcomes that will happen. If, and it, it actually spells things out that, oh, there will be great plagues and there'll be great, there'll be great so sorrow and sadness, and we're in that time right now. It's at the very beginning of it. And you will see within the next five five years, there will be much, much, much happened in the next five years that you cannot possibly be predicted at this moment, but yet is predicted in the book of Revelations. <laughs> awesome. That's an awesome answer. Thank you, Elijah. You, just a comment from the chat. David Waller said, Elijah is amazing. So... And then we have one more question from the chat. Um, uh, Lucia says that she's wondering if there's beings around her she's trying to, or entities around her, she's trying to communicate, um, but she's been on a roller coaster of emotion and she's not sure what's happening. Yes, you see, I was speaking about that, that emotional roller coaster is what's being brought about by those that do not want you to succeed. And there are beings that are trying to speak to you. And one of them is, wait a minute, let me see. There's at least two of them there. One of them is Yuyil. The other one is Syrian again. 
a lot of Syrian presence right now because the world needs a lot of spiritual uplifting. And without their presence, it would be pretty dire here right now. With all the changes that are happening, with all the things that you, many of you aren't even aware of that are happening, that are major events in, in on your planet, uh, with the axis, with the uh, vol volcanoes, with uh, energy fields, with uh, energy pulses, things of these natures. Um, some of you are not even aware of all the dire things that are happening, but are being dealt with properly at this time, I should say. And, um, but yes, one of them is Syrian for sure. And the other one, uh, it, that one's hard to tell, but I, I think it was, did I say you, Gil? Yes. I think it did say it. I think it, it is you, Gil. And they are trying to speak to you. And they are in the fourth dimension. Now, ah, well, I said the fourth dimension and many different thoughts popped up from different places. Uh, people would like to know about the fourth dimension. People are curious about the fourth dimension. People are wanting to know how to get to the fourth dimension or how to prove the fourth dimension, how to bring it into the third dimension. Well, that is another whole talk for sure but we will go into that maybe next time but a lot of fourth dimensional questions popped up in some people's minds at that moment should we take the question in the room then correct and they are coming now hi it's barbara again hello hi there hi uh, i forgot my questions Okay, December 2nd, I had surgery and I crashed on that surgery. Yes. And I remember being out of the body. Did yes. I make it to the other side? Um, one moment and I'll check for you. Okay. Yes, yes, you did. Okay, and, uh, but was only very short. It was very, very short because your crash was very short. They got you back really quickly. Okay. I have a um, okay. The thing is about that, is when you go to the other side, you always bring something back. I can tell a difference. And you can tell a difference, yes. You always, if people have NDEs, near-death experiences, they always bring something back from the other side. Always. It's never in question. They may not know exactly what it is, but they always bring something back because you cannot come back without something. Will I remember it? You eventually will remember, yes. And the other question, you mentioned something about my mission. Can you tell me something about that or is that something I have to learn? Your mission is just now starting to become part of what you want. You see, it has to be something you accept. And when you accept your mission, then it becomes, it becomes part of who you are. It becomes of in part of your vision and becomes part of the things around you and you are just now accepting that because you are now healthy enough to do so okay thank you you're welcome I love you. thank you um in the room we have angie now that has a question angie hello elijah greetings, greetings. nice to speak to you once again this is a yeah. personal question I am in the middle of a Vendorian infusion. Ah. <laughs> it's beautiful. I I have a lot of Kundalini energy, which is heat that is just swirling around my body, and my feet are on fire, and it is it moves around all the time. It is not bothering me. I just want to understand what it is doing. What is the purpose of it? really how long have you been feeling it and where do you feel the movement at this time it, it is moving up my spine almost like a chastity belt yes. right up through my well, brain what is, let me Down explain something that Kundalini can. oh go ahead yeah yeah it's it's all over it, it comes around through my breasts it spreads it and then it relaxes and then it goes it goes intense again and it's like a 
that as if it's breathing on its own. It's oh, yes. it's got its own life um, or intelligence or something like that. It's very uh, profound experience. Yes. I just don't know what I'm doing. It, oh, <laughs> I just relax into it. It will be over eventually. That is the the activation portion is coming into uh, into your body, and the Fendorian can be very strong with some people. It ignites the Kundalini. It goes up the chakras. You may think think that it's going up the spine, but it's actually going up the front of the spine. But you All can right. feel it in the yeah. back and front. But um, it's right now. You are. They're telling me that you are in the sacral area. You're uh, you're feeling uh, the the pulses of the body. The, the even some sexual and some. Um, very primitive feelings, but they're very yes. wonderful and positive. Yeah. Not that, not that primitive is always bad, no. but it can be very <laughs> positive as well. But it's also very, this at this moment, you're feeling some sexual awakenings too. And um, it's, it's at the sacral portion, but it's moving quickly to the solar plexus and heart. It's it's all through the body right now, but it's really stationed at the at the sacral at this moment. Mm. Yeah, it it is quite beautiful, you know. Yes, I just seem to be building my own field with it and uh, creating energy, and then it suddenly dis oh, yeah. it disappears and it goes somewhere, I don't know where, you know, and builds up again, and. and yeah, this is just my normal day. It's up and down yes. with energy. It's just, I feel like You're, I'm doing some real energy work, but I have no clue exactly what I'm doing. Exactly, <laughs> but you're fine. Let the Fendorian finish. It will take a few more days, I think. But okay. uh, when it's all over, you'll have a new freshness about a lot of things and be able to understand things in a little different way than you did before good uh, uh, another question i'm inquisitive about i'm married to a man that's kind of a pastor in the church and he's not well he's against me being a channeler and he's praying to God that I stop it because he thinks it's evil. How can I bring about change him really? But how do I? How does that whole? How does a change happen for him? No, well, let me. You must be the example. But let me All tell right. you. Uh, does he see you as an evil person? No. <laughs> that you are uh, gaining uh, are becoming more evil all the time. Not at all, no. Then ask him this. If channeling is evil, why am I not becming an entity of evil? Why is it yeah, that exactly. I am feeling a greater love for God? Why yeah. is it that the, the past prophets all channeled God? Mm -hmm. I think he's got to work this out himself. But yes, you. If he questions you, you may question him as well. Absolutely, yeah. Well, we, the thing we, is about many of these people that are pastors or in the church. They were taught from an early age what to believe, what is good, what is bad, and they and it took a hold of them very strongly at an early mm -hmm. age. And when that happens, it is hard to shr uh, shrug it off. You can't just say, oh, okay, that's fine. You can do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. They've been taught to question these kinds of actions. They've been taught that these are evil actions. They've been taught that anything that is the unknown, mm -hmm. such as aliens or uh, channeling or psychic energy, anything that they don't know about is evil. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. outside of their understanding is not good and is that true no of no. course it's not true is it if if you don't believe in something it's usually 
because you don't know anything about it or somebody told you something negative about it or positive or they told you about it and so that's the only thing you have to go on and that is the same with them many preachers or people of the church or things of this nature they were told what to believe and so they go that's right I got to believe that because he said so he read it in the Bible but you know how many people misinterpret the Bible how many people use the Bible for their own means of control yes so please be careful tell him to be yes. careful when he's looking at the Bible and reading God's love right acceptance tell him where's the acceptance is that part of the Bible Mm. He may say no because he may say, oh, God doesn't accept these things. And that has been taught to him as well. But if you look at the Bible, it will say, love all things, believe all things. Yeah. And there are parts of it that will show you inclusion, show you the love. The, the, there are... If you were to know the situations behind many of the stories in the Bible, which they don't give you all the background for, there's a lot of inclusion. They accept people for who they are. Did not Jesus sit down with sinners constantly? Yes. And I'm re reading the Phoenix Journals at the moment, and that is uh, apparently some kind of truth of Jesus, right? What is it? The Phoenix Journals. Ah, the rewriting of the the scriptures, basically. Yes, yes. Um, yes, be careful. Okay. <laughs> Let it resonate with you which parts have been correctly reanalyzed and paraphrased. Okay. It is uh, completely, it, there, there are like 200 journals and it covers so many topics, uh, topics that I wouldn't dare to go into, but I'm interested in Jesus, yes. Yeah. And Jesus is interested in you as well. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Elijah. I love you and I appreciate you. I love you so all. Much. You just have to understand that condemnation of others is not the way to go Correct. that that pushing people away is not what God would do that hating and despising sin they say oh we hate and despise sin but then they put it on the person and that is not the right thing to do the way to hate and despise sin is to pray for it not to venomize it and push it into the world as condemnation it's not the way to go because once you condemn someone they never look at themselves or you the same that's an interesting point yes Beautiful. yeah hmm. and what how do they look at god then do they look at him as a loving god with people around them that are condemning them and bringing them ill will they they have a they try to look at god as love but they they don't see it in anyone mm. or very few and so they don't see god being expressed as for who he really is mm -hmm. They may take on the name of God, just like these holy wars and wars in the name of God. He never wanted that. Mm. That is manipulation of the truth. Yeah. Thank you for that understanding. Yes. Very good. Is there anyone else? Elijah, we do have a few more questions if you, if you, I don't, I know we're coming towards the end. So can you take, yes. uh, can you take at least, I have three questions, if that's okay. All right. Three questions. Okay. Everyone, Don, you have your question. Good day. <clears throat> Greetings, Elijah. Greetings. Uh, 
I have the ability to uh, drop the barrier of the ankle biters around the earth and connect directly to source. I do this by visualization and light. Yes. Um, I can do that now if you want. Um, Did you, what I was, you were already doing it. Pretty much, yes. I'm thinking of it always. Yes. I, yes, I understand. That's your, You do it quite a lot. Yes, it's I become do. second nature to you, and you live part of your life in that realm, in that, in that understanding. That's fine. That's wonderful. So the, is the barrier totally down now? I've created a rubber band around the earth. The barrier, is it calm? Is that what you asked? No, is it collapsed? Is it it's collapsed for you, but not for everyone. The belief systems hold the barrier in place for some people. For you, it has collapsed, yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'll You're welcome. To do this. Yes. Much love to you. Continue to, to you, continue to do that because it does help weaken the barrier for a lot of people. I'll keep it down always. Thank you. Yes. Blessings. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you, Elijah. We have a question from in the um, the YouTube, and it, it's along the li lines of what Don was asking. So I'm going to bring it in. They said they have a scholar device grid around the Earth, um, with used but made by many light workers. Is this grid effective enough already? Um, it will it will get larger. It needs to be larger for what is coming. It will have to be larger, but it is strong already. To some extent, but it it does have its its weak points. It will get stronger and it will be effective. Yes, I can say that with a great positivity. Okay, perfect. And then uh, we have Sheer is asking a question. Sheer, hello, Elijah. Much love, brother. Much love. Um, I was wondering. There are two events that are coming for me. Yes. Uh, one of them is a test ne next Tuesday for st uh, starting school. And another one is a festival of 10 days in the end of the month. And I was wondering if you have any messages about things that I should know, words of wisdom. Ah, very good. Um, yes, the, the key for you is stay positive and be observant. You will observe, if you are in your greatest observation mindset, you will observe that there are uh, many people looking for answers that they are not finding, but you can help them with uh, sending energy to them and uh, praying for them. And also the things that you are going to be learning will be noticed by others and that is a great thing okay thank you very very much and much love to you much love to you as well thank you um do you have time for any more questions or no there's just a few is more is there more there to... there's just a t uh, two questions uh, marlene asks she says for the last eight weeks she has excruciating pain in her left knee and swollen feet. She's just returned from an assignment and she wants to know if that's directly related to her trip. Yes, one moment. Tell her that I will, I, she's listening, correct? Yes, in the YouTube. I am sending you some healing energy for your knees and feet. And I want you to accept it. Believe that it is coming and feel it. Accept that healing energy and it will bring the pain down quite a bit. So that you may be able to think properly again. With this kind of pain, it is hard to think properly. Your mind is only on the pain and therefore you need some pain relief. And I will send that to you. Okay, thank you for that. Yes. And then, uh, Paula, um, Paula Fado has a question. She says, uh, radical Islam has been taught since birth to hate, despise, and cut off the heads of those who have a different religious belief. How do we change that? 
by looking at the original texts by looking at what who God really is and I know these people are looking at the radical texts uh, the text in a radical way you can read any text and find radical thought processes in it but you have to be reading them in the right frame of mind to get the right message they are they do not want to hear the right message they want to be empowered they want the power and that's why infidels must die is because that gives them great power and strength and it gives them permission to act badly and that is not the reason for those scriptures they are totally taking them out of context and they are and there is nothing you can do to make them see the love that they were written with because they are not looking with love at the scriptures they are looking with i want power i want my own way i want I want to be able to do what I want to do. And this, the way they look at these scriptures, gives them permission to do whatever they want. That's not the purpose of scripture. The per this purpose of scripture is not to, to give you a, a, a consent for horrible action. It's not meant to be that way. The only way to stand up to these people is with love and with total uh I, I know they're trying to strike fear and in the hearts of mankind and if you stand up and courageous against them and say i don't care if you come and kill me i don't care my i believe god is love i believe god is here for to heal the earth and not condemn it or 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 destroy people it's here god is here to uplift you must be the bringers of a greater message because all they see is weak pathetic people fearing them and they love it there's no one standing up to them and saying you're you're horrible you're terrible i i mean i that's a condemnation of course and i shouldn't say that but we love you anyway we love you no matter if you're right or wrong we love you in your the way that you are you must see that god is love you must understand that god is love so because if you could stand up and say you're horrible they're going to take that as a condemnation of course and that's not going to help but if you tell them that god is love and that he loves them as well no matter what even if they kill you god still loves you just like how jesus spoke from the cross said forgive them they don't know what they're doing but that was an act of love and not condemnation and so even with these terrible people you have to love them because if you condemn them it only proves that the hatred is a part of what who they are and part of the world and it needs to be wiped out by them um but we must accept them in a way that lets them see that god is love and not hate all right is that time then i can't hear you Excuse me. Yes, we are at the end, and uh, we've answered all the questions. So, Elijah, thank and you I, so very much. Oh, there's someone there. He's asking. Oh, Is there a question? Oh, I thought I heard someone say I'd like. Okay. All right. Very well. <laughs> it's been a very. Thank you for having me and listening to me. I know that I went on my soapbox for quite a while. Forgive, forgive me for being a little too preachy, but I do want you to know that acceptance over condemnation. It's mm -hmm. easy to condemn. Even I can do it when I'm not thinking. But 
you must be in a thought process of love and understanding. But you know that God, God immediately said, what are you doing? You're condemning. Immediately hit me and was like, ooh, yes, you're right. Don't want mm -hmm. to do that. <laughs> Uh, David Waller in the YouTube chat, he uh, he put uh, a quote from the Bible in that's from Malachi, and he, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of fathers, lest I will come and strike the earth with a curse. And I know that Elijah is also Krishna, and who comes and, you know, turns the hearts of men back to God. So we want to tell you thank you so very much and, and to help calm people and remind them of what's important. Be strong, people. Be brave. Be courageous. There's nothing to fear. There is no death. Oh, of course, there's torture. And that's something that people really are afraid of. But be, be courageous because God will bring you through everything. Much love to you all. Many blessings. And may God's love be with you at all moments. And may you be able to call on it to bring you strength in those times of weakness.